Oh, Churchill's trying to get the hell out of there. They're taking a lot of hits. It's like, keep moving, Scotty. You just need to keep moving. Hello everyone, this is GrayShot17, and today I'm covering a 2v2 on the map, I think it's Wolfies, um, and this is company for us too. We got ourselves 2OKW versus 2 Brit, who know you too, lovely boy, 1993-2000. We also got D Gaming Nation and Taz. If you have a replay, make sure you submit it to GrayShotProductionsGmail.com down in my email below, or you can go to my Discord and submit it that way. Um, either way, it is... Excuse me, a uh, way that you can have your replay showcased. Again, higher priority goes to subs, patrons, among other things. So if you are a patron or a, you know, a supporter in some capacity, thank you again for your continued support. And if you would like to support me, go down below to my Patreon, subscribe on Twitch, uh, become a channel member on YouTube. I did redo all those recently. Uh, but whatever the case, thank you for your continued support. Now, what support will this OKW player be bringing in? Well... Who know, uh, who know you is bringing Elite Armored, so we got 221. Also, we've Sturm Tiger, among other things, so very good at causing hit and run tactics with the 221 and 223. Uh, I believe uh, play, <clears throat> a player that I know, Daxter, is just absolutely killer at using it. Uh, to the point where I get Vet 5 in the first 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's shocking. Infantry section push shots on the Sturm Pioneer. Now, if the Kubel were to come on in, this infantry section would probably push back, so D Gaming would have a pretty rough time. Here he comes. I like the idea of placing cover. If tree section is still firing, but Kubel going off for another target. And what is that target? That is infantry section in another uh, covered position. Not bad, uh, but unfortunately a bigger uh, vehicle came on in slightly, being the universal carrier, but it has more armor and overall can hold up in a fight longer than the Kubel. Kubel has better detection though, so that's what I like it long term in multiplayer games compared to the universal carrier because it's a long-term effectiveness is so much greater. But, uh, D Gaming did push up pretty effectively. In mid, it seems like the British might be having a little more issue. Sturm is pushed back, but Koopal's still putting fire. Health is really down for Taz. He's gonna need to either get medics or get support. Infantry section tried to come on in, but alas, uh, they, uh, model got put down and, uh, they got pushed back. A couple shots in those infantry section are probably gonna bite it. Here comes a Kubel, double Kubel, opening fire, drives the infantry, infantry section away. So Lovely Boy will be able to hold mid, and more importantly, hold the fuel on the right. Now the left area is more munition based, the right area is more fuel based. So right now it looks like it's 50-50, but with victory point siding with the allies, now if the Axis are able to gain a little more momentum, they could really put the British into a really bad spot. Surprised we're not seeing any uh, Rakenwerfers. But instead, we're seeing a 221 that I mentioned earlier. Finally deployed, moving on in. Remember, it doesn't have the auto cannon, but it's very effective machine gun. It's still quite capable of fighting light armored vehicles. And it's especially as it gets more and more and more veterancy. As you can see, there's a lot of bonuses that it can get to really help out the team and just be an absolute nuisance at being a hit run vehicle. Now, the Universal Carrier coming on in. I love it. One with the flamethrower, one with an MG to burn and shoot the Germans away. Now, Volk Squad's under heavy fire. We'll need to pull back. And of course, again, AT gun is next up on the docket. Probably should have been a little bit sooner. But again, glad they were able to get it to actually uh, fight off the enemy. Unfortunately, got a little too close. The Brits, by the way, went mobile assault regiment. And Lovely Boy went Overwatch. So Goliath, very explosive ordinances the OKW has under its belt. Oh, Stern Pioneer about to die. That is a very bad call. Don't know. Yeah, flamethrower body blocking it. That's hilarious it does do damage by the way just maybe not as much as it wants you're firing a flamethrower at a vehicle eh, it does a little bit up oh, was that another at grenade and both vehicles die together in a ball of fire not a bad way to go so the british uh managed to pretty much annihilate most of who knows his army and uh universal carriers are backing up the brits as they go further and further uh, into territory that's literally outside of the German base. Just a great start. Absolute amazing start. Alright. 
So, uh, the Brits, by the way, again, they have their own explosive ordnance with mobile assault, mobile assault getting mattress, by the way. So, pretty solid stuff there. If the mattress is able to be uh, used in a very effective manner, they can kill blobs and just cause absolute havoc. Though, again, it is such a wide area of effect that the likelihood of hitting it is something that really is down to timing and luck. More so uh, than the Katusha, which is more accurate and you have more control over the fire for that. Now, McKen River is backing up the Kubel, allowing maybe for a slow advance, but uh, Universal Carrier is burning down the building. Makes sense, you don't want the enemy to have access to a building that can be very good for them, and not so good for you. Now, uh, the British are holding behind some good cover. You could use the Rakan River to fire at the cover and break it, and then, of course, uh, you know, remove that cover advantage, but, especially for the Brits, grenade is thrown on the Rakan River, it's forced to retreat, Here's a carrier, again, has that Vickers K, very p potent against the light vehicle and infantry, and also, cheap suppression. Everyone forgets about it, but it's so cheap and so good, I highly recommend it. But, they can keep firing at the Axis, uh, just keep them away, but it looks like both players, very smartly, got themselves with their Cadmurfer to hold back those Universal Carriers. Very lucky that shot didn't kill the target, and it looks like... The Axis it may be able to start gaining momentum. Now, we have one. We have two medical. We have two medicals, which makes me think support guns. Maybe a half-track, but I really don't see that as likely. Just because I don't feel like a half-track in this scenario would be the best. Now, right now, the British don't have AT, but they have access to AT. So, one solid AT gun, and that thing is just pushed away. Again, if you're good with your micro and able to get around it, then perfect. But, like we saw with the Rakadmuffer down here. But I feel like maybe other vehicles might be better instead of putting 55 fuel into that. MG has actually gotten instead, which is a little fascinating. Looks like we do have some artillery, thanks to the British coordinate fire. Artillery from the base now pounding that building. They really don't want it there, and there it goes. Absolutely wrecked, and everything is coming down. Now, he's trying to get into the building with the Volk Squad. Unfortunately, Grenade is out the front door. He didn't retreat, which I'll give him that, but now he needs to because he's very low. He retreated. I'm not entirely sure why. I think that might have been a misclick. I think that was a misclick. But even though it was a misclick, uh, hopefully, Lovely Boy can take advantage of it. Uh, you know, because if the enemy is making a mistake, let him make the mistake and do what you need to do. All right. Let's see. Nah, it's fine. The OKW will have the oh, Wafa soon. Oh, God. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they could try the super weapons and the Sturm Tiger and the Goliath. Uh, look, to me, are ridiculous that their base, uh, oh, at, at the very least one time the Sturm Tiger was a base unit. But the fact that they can deploy it in such mass number. But, if used correctly, I've seen the Goliath rip and tear through blobs super effectively. And, for context... The Sturm Tiger needs no introduction because it's just so explosive and so deadly. It can just one shot armor and infantry from a great distance. Now, Rakan is now firing on the building. Uh, good luck. Volk squads are trying to fight behind some heavy cover along with the Sturm. I feel like the British and the Universal Carrier, nice veterancy by the way, slowly gonna wear down the Germans. Oh, Germans got some vet too. Please live. Please, okay. Rakan Warfare might keep him back, but here comes the infantry to. Push in, and he's going to need all the Volk Squad he can to hold that back up. Oh, no, he retreated again. Probably should have just walked it back. Uh, unless you're going to retreat all the Volk Squads back. Oh, shoot. Okay, here's the problem. Panzer headquarters, great. Not discounting that. But you need to make sure it's operational, you know, before the blob comes in and starts throwing artillery on it. That's, uh... That's going to really put into a bad spot. Volk Squad at least are taking mid. Victory point wise, I'm actually a little shocked that allies haven't pushed a little more. But they do have a 60 some point lead. So it's not too bad. All things considered. So the allies continue to, uh, you know, put pressure on the axis. But even with the, like for example, uh, D Gaming pushing on the left hand side. Lovely Boy and who knows, probably has something they can do. And that is a support gun and also Dotton, which is an interesting choice. We have smoke coming in here, but remember this will start firing here any second. And it'll fire its main weapon to suppress the infantry. He's probably just trying to get close to throw in our uh, coordinate fire. Oh, an AT gun. Interesting. He was trying to get in close. There's the artillery. He's probably not going to be able to kill it, but it'll surely weaken it. 
if if D gaming were to actually be able to push up and effectively advance on that target, uh, yeah, it would be GG. It, it would be, in my opinion, it would be GG if you lose 120 fuel this early in the game. Uh, for the out, because then the allies can get armor, and then you're even in a worse state. Not saying I haven't seen an Axis player counterattack, and they absolutely can, but as you can see here, the allies have been one step ahead of the Axis players this entire game with being able to push up, place like barbed wire and a lot of good points that they would normally go to. It's just not been a great day. So, uh, Stern Pioneer moving on in against the Brits in solid cover. Uh, we got additional forces coming on in. They can always destroy it, but luckily he retreats. I'm actually a little, I'm wondering why he's retreating. Like, or unless he's going for upgrades. Is he getting upgrades? Let's check on Taz. Oh, he did. Okay, so he's retreating to get a better gun. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's uh, that's not a good sign. MG does get in the building. Luckily, again, uh, hold, uh, keeps itself up. Wait, weren't you trying to kill it earlier? Nah, I guess it's fine. Anyway, uh, we have... Taz going Commando Regiment, which he dropped a glider, which can reinforce, aka why he has the medics there, so he can heal and reinforce his men. Commandos have also been deployed, so, uh, yeah, Volk Squad, hello, goodbye, and, abs and get absolutely wrecked. Oh, God. Volk Squad, uh, Stern Pioneer, Rakan Refer could actually, if he wanted to, I would start destroying that. Fire shots, knock it out. Because now the Brits have Brens. And that's going to be a lot of firepower coming on in. To just absolutely melt the German forces. Now, smoke comes down the MG. But luckily, lovely boy repositioned. So he's able to maybe suppress it. Though, if he kills the assault officer, or at least pushes away or forces to retreat, he won't be able to use smoke. Never mind, he used smoke. Oh, he already used it over here. Okay, never mind. So, never as long as the MG gets set up, they'll be okay. Maybe bring it up a little closer so you can support your team. On In mid, we have a uh, support gun Rakanwerfer. We have, again, some upgraded double Sadatin. So at least he's getting some better infantry that can go toe to toe with the upgraded Brits. So that's good. Um, that'll at least allow Huno to maybe, you know, effectively keep the enemy away. Panzer headquarters hopefully can start taking shots down at any, you know, inbound force that comes in too close. How, how much health does it have? Oh, okay, it's, it's nearly full health. So there, it did. The artillery did very little damage. What was damaged got healed up pretty quick. Covers being made. Do you have five-man squads? You do not. But you have grenades. Okay. So neither of them have got five-man squads. I wonder if that if they're just trying to save manpower with that. It uh, looks like they are getting armor. We have for Cromwell. Taz uh, is not getting the Cromwell. Instead, he went with the Churchill by getting the anvil. So he should be able to get it yeah, sooner than later, probably the next couple minutes. But I, I like that because you get a medium piece of armor, then you get a heavier armor to support your team. Now, both neither of them have exactly a main cannon that can penetrate, uh, you know, heavily armored forces. But you don't necessarily need to have that. Um, again, you have support it with AT and a, you know, uh, whether from an AT gun or AT fire from a, uh, you know, a normal infantry unit. In this case, I guess the only thing they really have is the British infantry. Uh, sorry, the Rungeoneer recovery units. Cromwell, though, at least will try to run rampant. Uh, fortunately, sh maybe should have kept going and went around because now he's being shot by the Rakatenwerfer. Which, again, good job, Rakatenwerfer. Just keep shooting. Oh, nice job with the smoke. Oh, MG's down, so the British could move in. But, again, has to be very careful on how far they push. On the right, Taz is in full retreat. The British... Uh, we're not expecting a tag team effort by Lovely Boy and Who Know, which makes me think that they are coordinating in some capacity. Please kill this. Oh God, this is what this is why you kill the uh, the glider because there could be commandos that are hiding inside that are gonna wreck your face. Now he realizes it a bit late as commandos, which I feel like you should have saw. Up. Oh. Oh, too late. Commandos pushed back the Abel Sadatin. FG section coming up with very little health is now coming on into support. Uh, okay, trying to kill their teammate, I see. A little, uh, British animosity between each other. But Commandos continue to wreck along with the Cromwell. Uh, do we have any AT nearby? Uh, not really. They pulled the AT back. Probably should move that back up. 
At least the allies will hold on to, uh, well, maybe can get those points back. But again, they need both victory points. And right now, surprisingly, the Axis have managed to turn the tide. I just say that because it seemed like the Axis have been on a little bit more of a back foot ever since the light armor entanglement that happened earlier. But no, they managed to kind of get things in gear, refocus, and actually push up. So, excellent job. Again, to both Lovely Boy and Who Know You. So let's see, uh, with their support gun each, they're able to, again, counteract the British maybe better firepower and infantry by slowly wearing them down as they advance. AT guns are pretty common. The only problem is right now is this blob. Uh, he could drop smoke if Taz wanted to on the MG, or he could just have a tree section just blast the MG because it's in uh, medium cover, not heavy cover. Oh my god, the MG gets wrecked. Just focus fire, men. Just keep focusing. Definitely not bullshit with our Brens. Oh, well, we have more Brens. Even the assault officer has a Bren. Uh, and yeah, there goes more squads with a nice grenade out the back door. F. Wait, hold on. Bottom grenade. Oh, nice hit. All three of G section down under half health. What a hit. Uh, up to vet two. Here's Carrie trying to burn down the building. Pants four pushing back all the FG section. Uh, well, most of it. Grenades being thrown. Hits both units. A great grenade. Although, great shot by the Panzer IV. And, yeah. Uh, both sides took heavy losses. I'll give a little bit more to the Allies. Because they didn't actually lose men. From what I could tell, they just lost models. The Germans, uh, yeah. They lost a few men. That man lost his head. But, it's okay. Uh, because, again, at the very least, they stopped the British from pushing in. And, hopefully, can get that back to that victory point. And start putting additional pressure. Can they kill the uh, Vet 3 Universal Carrier? That yes, they can. That's a nice little symbolic victory. Not the, you know, biggest unit as it the game progresses. But still, something that's quite uh, important. And that's what I mean. Have AT. That's all solid and good. But if you can just get around it, you can put it out of its misery. And hopefully they can kill it. We've lost an anti -tank gun. They need to watch out for AT grenades. But if I'm the Panzer IV, I would kill that AT gun as quickly as possible. A nice job with the smoke to wear down the infantry and make it uh, harder for them to fight. Now the only AT unit is gone, so focus on the AT gun. Or, at least in my eyes, I would. Come on, one more shot. Is he gonna... Okay, I was gonna say, don't put that man. Oh, there we go. Alright, AT guns recruit. He could still kill it if he gets a direct shot. Because it doesn't replace the health on it. You still need to heal it. Well, the... Uncommon thing, or not uncommon, but I guess one thing that you, I guess people forget is the fact you have to heal the the weaponry of the AT gun. Anyway, uh, Panzer IV is pulled back, and again, this one has a nice little coordinated fire. So this one has the Panzer Commander, which allows a uh, fire to come in from outside the map from a call-in. So that's pretty good, plus heat rounds, emergency repair. So this Panzer IV, even though it's injured, uh, is still uh, very, very potent. And this one... Again, still doing very good work. Now, the problem is with this, it does get all those upgrades. But, and also, with both Panzer IVs out, again, if something is greater, it's going to have a hard time fighting it. But, still, for the Germans, it's the armor seems to have been a good call and seems to be thrashing a lot of the Allied forces uh, to a certain extent. We'll see how the Allies respond, which I think we all know what's happening. And it looks like, yeah, they got more AT. Panzer IV... Uh, this would be a good time to launch our artillery fire and get the hell out of dodge. Just get the hell out of dodge, man. Alright, he's gonna pull on back. Support guns might be able to open fire as well. They're hitting the infantry in cover, though. Oh, just really weird grenade placement there. Don't know what D-Gaming was thinking. He does have a thousand manpower, so I guess he's thinking I got a lot in the bank. I don't really care. Uh, and he's gonna need it, because that infantry section just got put down. Plus with a bread, that is a very expensive unit to lose. Obel Sedan is moving into the middle point. The victory point is now hopefully under German control, which will bring the victory points. Uh, well, it would continue their push, because it's 10 points difference. Oh, 9, okay. But still, the Germans have a very, very small lead, and if they can continue with the victory point, uh, slow push down. Then overall, I think the Germans might be in a very good position to keep just hammering away at the Allies. And even though with that Churchill, you have to, wait, what happened? Did the Cromwell get beaten? Did I miss the Cromwell dying? I think I missed the Cromwell dying. I think that's why I pushed up, because he killed the Cromwell. Did he? 
Am I am I losing my mind here? Again, sorry guys if I missed that. My vi my my the eye. Oh my god, nice sh poor guy. The eye though normally look at the mini map is currently uh you know covered. <laughs> so apologies. I've been noticing a lot with my periphery vision is just like me missing stuff. My girlfriend has snuck up on me a few times. It has been yeah. It oh my god. Usually she never sneaks up on me. I usually can hear her coming, but no. Nope. She absolutely has scared me multiple times. Alright. Churchill looks scary, but looks like the Germans were able to force it back. Plus three AT guns? Yeah. More than enough firepower to hold back that uh, heavy tank. Now on the left-hand side, we have infantry pushing on in. Germans really don't have the firepower to deal with that, and the Allies will take it over. The Axis are pushing on in, though. Not really a... Wait, only one AT on this front. And found the commandos, forcing it to retreat. We have artillery coming in, I think? We do. Heat rounds are also active. Churchill taking a lot of hits. Gets a battle between... Uh, that seems the allies are losing, but as I say this, a firefly comes on in. Plus, we got German artillery. Again, lovely boy. Got himself a LFH to start pounding the, the allied position. If they focus, they can absolutely take down this Churchill. Not Churchill, firefly. One last shot. Come on. No, he doesn't go for it. I am shocked. He had great health on that. Almost a dot and covering and killing the AT gun, too. Right outside the base. I mean, genuinely, I am shocked. Panzer IV pushing on in a little ballsy now. Uh, but again, they're now getting Piots. Oh, wait, I think they're getting... No, 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 they're not getting Piots. He's going in to heal. I saw the Piot. I'm like, did he get the Piot to get this officer? No. It's just the icon was over his head. Or, uh, I guess, under his head. Anyway. Looks like they were able to kill the AT gun at least. Firefly needs healed. Churchill needs healed. Now, luckily with this unit, if you get the heavy engineers, it is quicker to repair. But still, for Churchill, it's going to take time. Time the British do not have, as right now they're losing a lot of control over the map. And the Panzer IV just continues to wreck shop. Taz does not have the resources to get that man back. Lovely Boy continues to wreck all the British with that Panzer IV. So if they knock out the Panzer IV, maybe they can do something. D Gaming didn't bring out a mattress, but again, what are you gonna hit? You hit the base? It's not really gonna hit all that much. There, there's really nothing here, genuinely. So maybe you wait from the retreat all back. Oh, oh, that's what he was doing. Well, uh, that's a big F. Uh, so who knows? Is I guess trying to stop him, but wasn't able to stop the base from being killed. Damn. Ah, uh, that's a big loss for the Germans. Every time they're like, ah, oh, yes, we beat the British, and the British are like, well, what if we kill your base, or what if we kill your unit? They've gotten a few good kills, not saying, but yeah, losing that base is going to really set the Germans back. Uh, because, in order to, well, in order for, like, with this thing to come out, they need Panzer authorization, right? So, he was probably like, I'm going to save up and get a Storm Tiger. Can't really do that now, because he needs the base back up to get that. So, you know, take what you can get, but right now, he needs quite a bit. Match just opening fire on the British position. I'm oh, sorry, the German position. Uh, managing to actually get a, quite a bit of damage. Also, coordinate fires coming in. Uh, no, no real kills. Just overall, just a nuisance. But still, at least the British were able to use that to advance. So I guess it was able to uh, actually be somewhat effective. Not too shabby. All right. Uh, German forces, uh, with them being pushed back, allies managed to get their fuel back, which, yeah, they, that'd be good, because it's, wait, no, they actually are good on fuel. Oh, they just got it, never mind, they, if they didn't have it, they would be a little bit worse, plus the Germans need this position back to kind of make it a little more fair. Anyway, so, what are we looking at? We got the Panzer IV in need of heals. Uh, at least the Sturm Pioneers are working together, so that's pretty good. Again, if both these Panzer IVs went, you know, coordinated, kind of like what they did before, I feel like the Firefly or the Pan or the Churchill would definitely be in for a hard time, especially with heat rounds. Again, it's funny how the guy with better, oh, like, tech is doing worse than the just general base one. But yeah, if you, if I'm him, I would try to use my, um... Excuse me. I'll try to use the uh, firepower to knock out this or a coordinate fire on the AT gun, etc. And you have the resources for it right now, at least for one or the other. 
hopefully both here soon. All right, Panzer IV moving on in. Uh, the other Panzer IV is a little farther behind. AT gun's back up to Churchill. That's going to be a hard fight for that Panzer IV by itself. AT gun. Uh, not sure what it's doing, but it's not doing anything. It's, uh, it's uh, chilling. I guess the crew are taking a lunch break. Uh, I guess there's their lunch. All right, take it. Now get back to action. All right, instead, the Panzer IV goes to mid. And again, right now, if we look... Um, Lovely boy only has one frontline unit. Uh, who knows has a lot of manpower, but and actually he's doing a bit better. He has uh, two of Sedan and a Volk squad. Nice job with the smoke. Wears down the infantry's overall health and allows the Obel Sedan to possibly, uh, actually most likely win this fight, especially if they have additional support coming in. Maybe not, but at least the vet three Obel Sedan is a good cover. That will definitely help. All right, Churchill. Very little damage. Backed up by a solid amount of infantry. Uh, managing to hold on to the victory point. Uh, they need a second one, though. So even though the Germans are, I feel like, losing a little bit more, uh, the victory point's still open, so good job for them holding that and guarding it. Because, yeah, now it's about over a 100-point difference between the two sides. So hopefully that means the Germans can just seal the game and keep the British back for the remainder. But as we all know, this game never goes as easy as that, and there's probably going to be an Allied counterattack. Which, by the way, okay, there, he got a Piot. That's good. I'm glad I wasn't, you know, completely out of, my, out of my mind that no one was going to get a Piot. All right. We also got two mattresses. I'm very curious to see if these units get any real damage, right? Or any real kills. Again, not saying they're bad. It's just the area of effect is so great and the target is so, uh, like, sp not sporadic, but just, like, there's no defined target other than, like, this big area of effect that it makes it hard to really rack up a kill count unless the enemy's just so congested in one area. But if they're trying to focus on two armies in one place, that's a good counter. So, keeps uh, things spread out. Speaking of which, support gun up to vet 2. Not too shabby. Double AT guns to protect against the firefly. Oh, my God. If only they could sight. I hear something. Oh, you beautiful bastard. Well, who needs a Sturm Tiger when I can get a King Tiger? Well, Firefly can still do quite a bit, but yeah, uh, as long as they use this right, oh by golly, could I see a lot of damage being done. A lot of damage. Commando's trying to push on in to kill the AT guns, uh, but again, right now that King Tiger is uh, the bigger threat and drives it away. Right now, entry section pushing on in against the Obel Sudan. Maybe they can hold back the FG section again. Oh, there's, again, a perfect use of smoke where both of them... Nice booby trap as well. Loved how he got off the point so he could explode. Grenade is thrown. He pulls back to be on the safe side. But the FG section is well pulled back. So, overall, not too shabby. Good defense by the Obasadon player right there. So, who know? You definitely know. Obasadon, though, very, uh, again, fr fresh off the boat. Having a real hard time against the veteran fully brained up infantry section. Again, I'm actually a little shocked we're not seeing five-man squads. Maybe it's just to get manpower drain, but I feel like five-man squads would be a little bit better, but who knows. Mattress fire comes down the Panzer IV. Um, interesting choice. I'm not saying artillery can hurt armor, but I feel like you'd be better off against the infantry, but again, it still does damage, especially if it can penetrate, it would do, you can get some quite a decent amount of experience off it. Nice shot with the Churchill and the rear armor of the Panzer IV. Artillery is also hitting that area, and AT guns are driving it away, so Panzer IV needs to get the hell out of Dodge before it gets absolutely eviscerated by the double um, AT gun. Now again, I know the Germans have those double Rakadmurfers, so maybe moving them over here? Oh, oh, okay, or just get a King Tiger. That, that, that's also something. So for those who don't know, again, looks like the Germans have gotten two King Tigers. Again, this one doesn't have the bonuses that the other one has, but still, it's a very large threat, and they've gotten themselves a mech building too to do active heals. Uh, yeah, good, good, and again, they're spread out too, so the mattresses can't just concentrate in one area. So, they, they put a maximum distance between them to make sure air of effect was a little less you know, harmful to their buildings as 
this one was. This one was a little too close. Maybe a little farther back would have been better. But overall, still a solid match right now. We look over here. Axis have the advantage. 150 points. But will it continue? Let's see. Hmm. All right. British are gearing up for a counterattack. He gets himself a second Churchill. Interesting strategy. Going with armor that can now be penetrated. And uh, main guns that have trouble killing King Tiger armor. We'll have to see if that strategy pays off. Because right now, D Gaming's Firefly uh, just got absolutely eviscerated by double Rakan Ruffers. So excellent, excellent job right there. Which, by the way, it looks like D Gaming is saving up for something bigger. No, nope, uh, maybe not. Holy God, holy God, sorry, D Gaming. Sorry, I'm like congested. Absolutely eviscerating the squads by who know. Killing one of the units. Luckily, a T gun gets put down. And the Panzer IV is now nothing really to fear except fear itself, as it can just mow down a lot of this infantry section. Destroying the cover as well, which I love. Infantry section and now opening fire on the AT guns. Pants 4 just trying to stop it. We have artillery fire coming on in. And if he doesn't move, D Gaming is absolutely going to get blasted. Let's see. Artillery comes down. Can we kill the AT gun? No, he just keeps focusing elsewhere. King Tiger is fo focused in mid against the Churchills. Uh, looks like the AT is easily holding back this Panzer IV. The other king decided not to get in there. Well, wow, Rakan Ruffer was stole. Oh my god, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Alright. Um, I feel like this King Tiger should have taken part, but maybe it was healing or something? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, we got a half track. Okay, nice. They can extend the view of the German forces so that way they can see farther. But again, uh, the allies did take the victory point, so they're able to stop the bleed for even for a little. That man went flying. I don't know what happened there. Maybe artillery? But it looks like DK, I think while he held the position, doesn't really have the forces to consistently hold against another attack. I feel like if the king pushed up with infantry, this entire left side is going to fall apart real quick. On the right, well, I feel like with the AT guns and the Churchills, I would say Taz has more than enough men. If we look at abilities, though, D Gaming has a lot of munitions. Taz doesn't, so he really can't call in the air support. Lovely Boy is doing better, but he's still about 100 munitions away from calling in close air support, which, again, the British don't have AA, so these would absolutely help push back a lot of the armor. Who know? Again, a decent amount of munitions, but he's mostly using it to support his armor rather than anything else. Mattress does come in clutch, though. Getting a decent helping of kills as it pushes back the Obel Sedan and the Volk Squad, almost getting both of them killed, which uh, would have been great. British managed to hold on to the point, barely, I might add, and the MG got put down, but hey, they still they can recruit it. They still hold it, and overall, I'd say I'd call that a win. Now, what do the Germans have? Well, they got themselves a Stuka, so... They have at least some artillery to bring, uh, come on in and really push the German, oh, sorry, the British back from their heavy covered positions and kill their support gun. Will it work? Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that was a nice, clean hit. Almost a, almost a vet one strike. That's very hard to do, but good job by who know. Getting enough uh, hits in. I love the debris all hitting as soon as the explosion happens. But getting enough hits in almost get up to vet one, but just barely, barely outside of its reach. So close yet so far. Now, again, if I am a uh, lovely boy, I would not launch an assault unless the T guns were in range, or yet a way to counteract this. Honestly, maybe a uh, push around the flank. I know hindsight's twenty twenty. I, I, okay, maybe it is. Is I mean, I guess it's twenty twenty with my right eye. My left eye, not so much. But. You could push up here, maybe drop smoke, and you could try to knock out the AT guns. That way your armor could move in and really provide that support. I'm really shocked the King and Panzer IV have not been able to push back these Churchills. I get the AT guns, but like, it's a King Tiger. You focus it with infantry. But I'm seeing more shots fired this general direction than this general direction, even though this is the bigger threat in my eyes. Because as soon as that, yeah, as soon as King Tiger goes into the firing line, the those AT guns are going to start wrecking. They're going to start blasting. All right, here comes the mattress. D-Gaming providing a, a nice amount of fire support. 
Churchill's advancing, seeing opportunity to get some kills. Again, they have their own problem with the Red and down to about a half health each. A T gun's uh, not following suit and moving up. He's gonna need to heal. Oh, here comes the air support. Oh, Churchill's trying to get the hell out of there. They're taking a lot of hits. It's like, keep moving, Scotty. You just need to keep moving. All right, German planes are circling. They're strafing the infantry in hardcover positions. They should be out of range. The King Tiger and Panzer IV could go in for the kill. They have the opportunity, but they're not. Again, we're seeing a situation where the Panzers allow the British to escape. Even with all the air support. Look at all that. Just not able to get the kill. That's unfortunate. And the Germans, though, successfully push up and take the position. Could take more. Truly, they could. Hopefully, they do. And the armor, again, the King Tiger definitely took hits. Doesn't... Wait. Yeah, it doesn't have as many kills as the Panzer IV. But still, uh, I feel like it's more, the, more, you know, more than capable of holding the front as they advance. And then hopefully knocking out... Especially if they knock out this AT gun that's kind of still on the front. Infantry section moving on in. But again, Panzer should be able to easily hold it back. Recon's flying overhead thanks to that half track, I would assume. Which is perfect for giving you easy recon. Again, if you're an OKW player and your team needs recon, get this half track. Because not only can you see farther, you can actually call in a recon plane. It's so good. It's so freaking good. Lots of mines in this sector. Stuka does get up to vet one. So that's good. A, little, a couple mines in close proximity. So maybe he's hoping the Panzer IV rushes in and just hits all three at once. Rare, but I have seen it happen. I, I, I've definitely seen uh, a Panzer IV thinking he's all that and quickly realizes he's not. But, again, I feel like these guys are a little more competent. And I don't think a King has the speed to really hit all of them. But, you know, we'll see. I do love the fact there's a Rakenwerfer and a Six Pounder here. So at least they have, you know, two separate types of AT guns open fire on this German one. Plus the Firefly as well. So this King Tiger, which is going in unsupported... For the most part, if he pushes up. Again, he can neutralize maybe one with artillery calling, but they're spread out. Alright, D gaming is making sure he's not an easy target. Now, I think the bigger thing is right now the victory points. Right now, the Germans are like, okay, we have about a 120 point lead. We need to win this game. I think we can. Uh, let's see. 18 guns are firing. Uh, some miss. Some definitely hit as the Firefly hits the King Tiger. Although some shots bounce. Damn. Smoke is coming down. Firefly pushing on in against the King. Again, as long as they keep pushing up, they decapped it. So even if the, the British do decap mid, they would, the Allies... It, it would still be a, a slow trickle down. Mattress hitting his own position, which I guess it was the last check. It's weird how the Germans, at least in my eyes, um, okay, it, it seems like they have a smaller force, but it's, it's just more veteran. It seems to be doing better for what the cost. Like, this almost Sedan squad is single-handedly holding mid, and I believe he could probably hold. He's under a heavy mattress fire, but again, uh, he does get passive healing, so, oh my god, he's still wrecking the infantry section. Nice. So as long as he doesn't lose a model, right, he'll just slowly heal in a few seconds and get back up to full health. So genuinely, genuinely, that artillery strike did nothing. There's the heals, and there's his health go back up. All right, we may have a slow push by Taz. Again, also we have a search lay over here, which helps. Just to give you an idea, it does really help with sight. You can see it pushes all the way up to here. Um, wait, hold on. Is it? No, no, it's still there. Okay. Alright. King up to vet one. Give you some nice shots. Maybe activate spearhead. Give a little more sight. AT gun and uh, Churchill don't know what to do. Again, both Churchills looks like did survive, which is good. But I feel like uh, Taz maybe should get a Firefly or something. Really crack this. And have more mobile AT. King Tiger seems to be blasting the British uh, Royal Engineers coming on in. Is he going to try to push left? I mean, he could. There's not Everything's scattered, but that might be from a Stuka strike or something. Like that. Yep, Stuka just fired. 
Wait, white phosphorus on the right? Hold on. White phosphorus can block the shot of armor and make infantry unable to fire. Here comes the Brits. They are moving in. And the British charge is under white phosphorus fire. King Tiger can't, is not firing for whatever reason. Okay, maybe direct fires. Oh, because white phosphorus is blocking his sight. He's not in it, it's just blocking his sight. British forces successfully managed to take the position. Churchills are advancing. They both bounce off the king. Uh, it's like, it's like, shit. Montgomery, we need additional fire. Oh wait, never mind. We can hit the half track. Damn it, we need like a 17 pounder on these things. Man, that would be a cool upgrade. Maybe in the sequel game to this one, we can get a 17 pounder and everyone would be fine with it. Anyway. King Tiger moving on in. Luckily, uh, the infantry's all gone, so the armor's able to move up. Maybe with the additional infantry support, they can knock out the AT guns. But AT does focus on the Panzer IV, neutralizing it. Bet 3-1. Last shot. Bounces. That's pretty funny. All right, they're moving up. Hopefully, you kill the AT gun. King Tiger then can move in and start wrecking shop. British successfully get some good hits in, but they also lose some AT guns. If they lose to Churchill, I can definitely see the Germans making even a, a small victory out of this. Because remember, the British had to use a lot of resources to gain, uh, to push on up. No bounce off the, off the uh, Churchill. Hold on, loses the almost Don squad. AT guns done though. King, as long as he feels confident, can maybe push on up. Firefly is gone. Looks like on the left hand side that was killed, uh, and looks like a lot of D Gaming's forces were obliterated. So not bad. Churchill's once again very low on health. Again, this is where Spirit would come in. Because then we have extended sight. So maybe get the shot off. Because we look at the armor, he can't really see. Although we probably saw the debris fly into the air. Nope. God damn, Churchill survived once again. A lot of the British forces did not. So, manpower-wise, I would say that probably Taz lost quite a bit. But remember, the Obstadon squad, the really good one, also got KO'd. The Vet 3 won. So, and also look on the left, who know also lost some of his veteran Obstadon squad. So, I don't know. Like, right now, I yeah, at the very least, maybe you could take back the victory point in mid. He can continue to wear down the enemy, but... You lost a lot of veteran units in that defense, and you really didn't kill any of the British ones, for the most part. You did kill an AT gun, but, like, frontline force. Come on, King Tiger, one shot the... Oh, uh, no. It's like, one shot the commando squad. Hey, at least the Stern Pioneer got the L uh, the LMG. So the MG-34 will be able to be used against the British still. Interesting choice. Maybe put up some recon flares and grab the territory so you can see. Oh, my God! All right, the... Yeah, yeah, well, lovely boy needed uh, a victory and absolutely one-shotting the assault officer, I would say, is a damn good victory. Hot damn, that was a hell of a shot. All right, population-wise, again, the Axis have gained the lead over the Allies, so there we go. Wasn't able to kill the Arbor, but able to kill some infantry. Also, he still the Vet 3-1 from Who Know, which seems to be doing a lot better with his Panzer IV as of late, though killing a Firefly would do that. He's going in deep. Maybe trying to target the Churchills, but uh, they've got some solid repairs. So he's going to run into a freshly killed... Where the fuck is he going? This isn't like the Soviets where you have a... Um, what's it called? A Katusha that's lying in wait. I guess you could have a Sexton, but still. Panzer IV realizing that he is outgunned. Unless he gets some special munitions. He's going to pull back. How is he... LFH has 12 kills, so it's it's done a bit to support. Usually in 4v4s, you really see the veterans shoot up and kills. In 1v1s or in 2v2s, you really don't see them used. Unless it was the the amazing V4 before it was taken away. Now it uh, it's less one shot capable. So anyway, I yeah. Yeah. So, British managed to retake this position. They still have a 
decent amount. But D Gaming had to burn through a lot of his reserves to get that back up. Now, who who know you? He has a decent amount of reserves. And I would say probably in need of some mobile Zidane. So maybe use some of it. Alright, we're 45 minutes in this game. Allies are down about 150 points. They definitely need to turn the tide. Right now, keeping the Germans from capturing it, not a bad idea. But, yeah, they're going to need to do something more, you know, something uh, better in order to really hammer home a victory. If I'm, right now, if I am, like, trying to figure out a way to do this, it, maybe you push on in on this guy's flank and cut off a lot of the armor. Might be a little risky, but... I feel like you need to definitely hammer home some decent victories and some decent kills. Wait, maybe against this Panzer IV. No, it escapes. Now the king's moving in. Oh, God. My Phosphorus is coming down, which is messing some of the armor. Like, right now, if he's in it, he can't fire from it. AT got opening fire. Good shot with the Firefly, though one shot does miss. At the very least, it did force the King away. MG suppressed the FG section trying to defend mid. Hold on, on the right, Germans lost it, so actually, victory point-wise, it stopped the bleed. King, though, moving on in against the Churchill. Oh my, God. well, okay, there goes that unit. Yagpons are coming on in. Not, I, I didn't really mention this, not bad tank destroyer, especially versing Churchills. Churchill again, so low. The other one is body blocking. Hold on! Jagdpanzer finally puts one of them down. Finally, Stuka comes in. Kills the Royal Engineer. Great AT grenade on the uh, the King, though. Holy shit. We actually have a dead Churchill. Just need an actual tank destroyer to take it down. Alright, Firefly is pulling back. The lovely boy successfully pushes back Taz, who lost most of his army, has a good amount of fuel, but that doesn't help the fact you're currently missing a lot of manpower. So overall, and also I love who's sitting in White Foster, he's like, I don't give a shit, I won. I killed the Churchill. None of you bastards did this before, I did it. Alright, now I would definitely take the territory, maybe put down some flares, and... Uh, hope to- wait, hold on. Panzer IV tries to go in for the kill. Launched artillery, but AT guns do get the hell out of there. Very close to losing the units, but they do manage to get out. But the Germans may win this game. Uh, g genuinely, uh, I meant concentration. It looks like the Allies did that against- uh, Sorry, the Axis did that against the Allies, so excellent job. Oh, Sedan slowly getting that veterancy, pushing back the FG section. Can we get another wipe? Taz cannot afford it. Commandos with Brands doing the best they can, but the Ober squad just absolutely wrecking. And while they probably won't win the fight unless they get support, they're doing what they can. There's the support as the King fires. Brings down the Commando's health down to, well, under 20%. All right, recon planes flying overhead. Gives an idea of what the British have, which is effectively not much. Also, I realize he has to keep moving these mattresses because as soon as he doesn't, uh, the LFH will probably target it. That's probably what he got the LFH for, is to target the mattresses. So, not a bad thing. Here comes the Stuka. Are they going to target this? Are they going for something else? Oh, they're going for the AT guns. Nice. Alright. Taz is not... He's... Okay, never mind. He's going to save up for something else. Maybe a Firefly? That would be my guess. Instead of getting the AT gun, you get a Firefly with a little more... Something a little more mobile. We got recon planes flying overhead, and he's he's doing smoke raid operation. All right, bold strategy. I mean, essentially, again, you can you get smoke. You can move on in, try to grab the territory. Uh, and again, not not too shabby. But if the enemy is already there in heavy concentration, I don't know what a delayed smoke action is going to really do. Right? Because the king can just fire through the smoke. I guess mid was captured. So their plan, quote unquote, worked. 
But I feel like it just takes a really, just more of a flex and the Germans will get that back. As they kill the AT gun. Rip. Panzer IV, uh, again, about to go at another push. There's a decent amount of AT, so I see this backfiring pretty quick. But who knows? Artillery's coming on in. Has the resources, using heat rounds. Hold on. Panzer IV goes down. Veteran Panzer IV lost and not really any kills. Oh, wait, hold on. Here comes the air support. Firefly trying to get the hell out of Dodge. One more strafe would do it. And I think it's... Oh, he's still in the blast area. Until he gets out of this zone. I think he's safe now. They also need recon. So they need, oh, Which I think... No, he's not calling in. I thought he was calling in a recon plane, but no. They're doing some infantry strafes against... Alright, they did some infantry strafes against some units. The armor got hit, but the Churchill can take a few shots. Uh, King is just pushing into the mines, which would be fantastic to focus on if it wasn't for the fact uh, that, well, there's not really much to kill it. Okay, they're bringing it in. But I still don't think it's a great amount. And again, it's under the air support, which has another few seconds to fire. So, the King has a damaged engine, but it's going to get out relatively fine. Stuka firing close range, knock out the AT gun. Oh, and hit. No, miss the infantry. And the Agpanzer came out on the flank, so. Again, good job. It's like, oh, my teammate's in need or injured? Okay, I will support. I will cover his retreat. Again, the Germans acting like a team. The Allies need to start acting like a team. Because, again, they've been kind of doing their own thing. They need to come in, work together, and then just take down uh, some of these German forces. Because, yeah, otherwise they are gone. They are... Yeah, no, Jagdpanzer continues to just... Oh, and Rakenwerfer just boxing and Churchill might die here! Oh my god, if he loses the Churchill, I don't see how the the British can pr come back from this. Firefly is well under fire. Sturm Tiger just, uh... Yeah, it, it, he made a British unit disappear. So... Uh... I'm seeing this as a German victory. 58 points remain. Oh, wait, hold on! Hold on! Hold the presses. British forces uh, grab that uh, the left-hand side. And they only decap mid. So even though it's about a 180-point lead for the Germans, the, the British aren't hemorrhaging right now. They have a little time to refocus. And we have a new Firefly from D-Gaming. So maybe if they concentrate that. And, okay, they need to act like a team. You need a white phosphorus, bring in everything you got, and take out these kings. Right? Because, uh, yeah, these kings are 100% just causing absolute chaos for the Brits. Plus, again, you have the Jagdpanzer that's been great at support. Stuka's firing. It's trying to kill the commando squad. Almost got it. Alright, double fireflies. Again, we have four fireflies on the on the field. But again, that five for Ken, we're for waiting. Camouflaged, ready to ambush, just lying in wait to tear apart the German, uh, sorry, the Allies. So, again, we'll see. Again, it's like maybe the king gets ballsy and pushed up, hits another mine, but again, as soon as they get hits, he's like, oh shit, and we'll start pulling back. So, I don't know. Again, victory point wise, somehow the Brits managed to capture mid. Don't expect that for very long as the veteran German forces just move on in and try to push back the Brits. Now, luckily, mattress fire is going to just be a nuisance, but it might be a nuisance that stops the Germans from capturing the territory, so we'll see. King Tiger advancing, but again, not the best retreat path. Has to go all the way around and they could be blocked. Fireflies, though, could be under fire in a second from a Jagdpanzer. It has been under fire already. No, they're going to move up. And look at all the repairs. They have so many men. 
it's like the inner is it's like the enterprise before midway it's like we will get this fucking ship operational in 72 hours god help us and they did <laughs> they fucking did all right firefly is still under repairs at grenaded by the brits one yag Panzer goes down rockets hit hold on a second serve tiger trying to assist but king tiger is injured he needs support raken with her body blocked he can't shoot with the debris in his way king is still trying to fight on the front buddy i don't think that's a good idea sturm never fired his shot the hell yeah the raken for now trying to get some kills but the british armored wave approaches churchill body blocks the firefly takes the shot now focusing on the at gun at still wrecking where's that sturm where's the sturm that would have been a perfect shot sturm tiger afraid of the brits fortunately recruit cannot fight or not hold up and yeah at gun bet five gets put down Sturm Tiger runs away. King Tigers need repairs desperately. Lovely boy using his reserves to pump out some uh, tank destroyers. But again, it's going to be a little bit. And the Brits managed to actually push with a smaller force and actually effectively push back the Germans. Now, heat rounds are active. Maybe he's hoping he can get some kills with the fire against the Fireflies. Suka comes on in, does get a kill. Hell of a shot with those heat rounds. It puts down a Firefly. Again, Taz down to a single Firefly. D Gaming has two. Where's D Gaming's Fireflies? Well, they're undergoing some repairs in the back lines. Truly, this could be anyone's game right now. Also, I'm shocked that they have not tried to target the Stuka because I, I swear to God, it's been in this one spot the entire time. I'm not entirely sure why it's here, hugging the train car, but it loves that fucking train car. And it does not want to leave. All right. Yagpons are coming on in. Again, they're sending a piecemeal force, and this guy's not even healed. He probably just got yelled at to go back and fight. Firefly is still trying to help. Churchill's still there. All right. Well, uh, both sides lost something right there. Hell, I mean, god damn. Wait, here comes the air support. Focusing on the Firefly and the Churchill. Can they get some wipes? Here comes the German Air Force, strafing. Both British units are very low. They get outside the area of effect, and they make it back to base. But the German Air Force is still over, uh, pretty much has complete air supremacy. And has managed to make sure that uh, any German, fo uh, sorry, German, Allied force that comes in will absolutely be forced back. All right, they still need to grab the territory. Plane crashes into almost into the Stuka. Multiple fireflies hit the king, each taking the, uh, their own turn and wearing down its armor. And the armor is going down. Again, this is what happens when you have a piecemeal force. Well, it's D crude. The king lost its veterancy, but it's not dead yet. Okay, now it's dead. Now, now, now it's now now it's dead. God, if I use that for this thing, you're like, oh my god, will they get the king back? And it just immediately dies. People are like, what the fuck? <laughs> Commandos push on in. Again, uh, unless we see some smoke action, which Bloody Boy is not doing. Zed throws a normal grenade. Does a little bit, but still. Does retreat. Here comes the Stuka. Sort of misses target. Hopefully the Germans grab that territory back. Again, right now, fuel-wise, the axe is doing better. But, right now, as they say with a lot of games, when they get into this, this like, late game section, fuel doesn't really matter. People have kept their armor alive for so long that people have mass amounts of fuel reserves. Munitions, that's the key. <laughs> Too difficult. It's like, why don't you just die already? AT guns fire, tank destroyer as well. But the line of TDs from the Brits just will not be, uh, you know, will not go down easily. They fire, almost kill the, they do, they do kill the Jagdpanzer. The Fireflies are still ready for a fight. King though, coming on in, using those heat rounds, hoping for another wipe. Hits the mine, hits both mines. He was so determined, so freaking determined. 
They need additional support, but D Crude are out of action. The Icons are super low. Firefly bet three cracks the king. And both kings are down. God damn. Sturm Tiger might be able to save the game though. Fire the main weapon. Does manage to force the commando squad back. Doesn't kill it. But the Germans hold on to this objective. Through sheer firepower. They're going to need to burn all their reserves. Which they still have a lot of. A thousand, fifteen hundred manpower, both easily enough to pump out. In this case, Panthers, a uh, lovely boy. Uh, he is currently just uh, desyncing right now. He's just uh, the processing is taking some time from the compute what to do. He's just at, at a loss. Luckily, that Stuka from Who Know did an amazing shot and put down D Gaming's uh, infantry section there. We have Commandos. Just dropping on in. That's a really well-preserved commando glider. Too bad it's going to be utterly wrecked here in a second. But they still managed to take the position. Hot damn. The British will not go into the night so easily. They refuse to give up. <laughs> they, again, they're really, they're really going under the idea. We shall never surrender. Against the odds, against everything, against sheer German firepower and overwhelming numbers. Because, yeah, right now the Germans are the ones with the reserves, not them. But they managed to hold on for dear life. But here comes the Sturm Tiger once again. And it can fire faster now because it got to bet one. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Jesus, bet two. No, fuck, bet three. Jesus, what am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking of the mattress. But, no, Sturm Tiger gets the grenade. What am I saying? Gray shot's wrong. Downvote the video. Okay, I'm not wrong about this. King Tiger pushing in against multiple fireflies. Maybe not the best idea. Although, there goes the commandos. How? Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, King. You, ne you, you need firepower, right? To assist you. Although, I will say that howitzer. Doing quite a bit. Here comes the line of fireflies. King Tiger needs uh, some support. None is given. A T gun is back at base. King luckily takes a bunch of bounces, but Fireflies don't want to give up that easily. They're like, oh my god. Not the Stuka. Oh, there goes, oh my god. We're seeing a British advance breaking down so much Axis armor. Three pieces of weaponry just down. The Stuka, the half track. We're about to see it. The Stuka's hiding in the debris. Like, don't shoot me, please. Four units get put down. St Sturm Tiger, take the shot! Come on, man! How do you miss? The Churchill's like, it's fine, guys. Go without me. I'll take them all on. It's still alive. It's still fighting. Panther goes down thanks to the Fireflies. The second Panther coming on in. Who no use Panther counterattack doesn't seem to be fair of uh, well panning out all that well. Can he get another wipe? He does. Hold on, he's blitzing. If he misses, this firefly is done. Hold on. Last shot and the firefly goes down. The Panther will not take no for an answer and kills both fireflies in its last life. Holy god. The Panther Relief Force, it came in and definitely did some relieving. Taz, while successfully holding on to the point, still, still loses it all. He's down to two units, and one of them is a medic. This medic is looking like, what the fuck am we supposed to do? One commando squad is all that remains for Taz, who managed to successfully take the right. I'll give credit there. D Gaming has an army. For some reason, got snipers. I'm not entirely sure why he got sniper. But goddamn, he got snipers. They're trying to get the stuff back up. Mattress opening fire, trying to stop the decap. But decaps are being done on both sides. Well, oh my god, Mattress actually kills the unit. Lovely boy, and who knows it, are pouring everything they have into their big, mighty heavy tanks. But another mine hits the king! 
These kings just come on in, think they're the boss, without, you know, doing getting a veteran C, and they're just being wrecked. Hold on, Churchill coming on in, body blocking the panther, uh, sorry, not panther, uh, the king tiger as panther comes on in. Can he kill the king? He does! King Tiger is down! The Germans are literally throwing away their advantage. Another Sturm Tiger comes on and says, Fuck you to the mattress. Oh, or something. Something was. I'm assuming something was there. Hopefully, he didn't miss. Firefly does not have enough for rockets. Churchill probably gonna lose it here. AT guns recruit. I don't think they have enough firepower to kill the Panther. We have recon going overhead. Not entirely sure. I mean, again, also boost infantry. I'm not going to deny, but like, he, he's not moving it. Germans right now are trying to grab the right hand side. Oh, the Royal Engineer, maybe. But German forces managed to hold on to the point. Middle needs to be taken. Something needs to be taken. We have a glider, ladies and gentlemen. The br he will not give up. He fucking refuses. Here he comes, glider inbound. Right with the other one. Okay, maybe it was a little bit, uh, whatever. They're going in for the Oval Sedan and trying to stop that advance. LEFH is pounding that position. Commando's trying to hold back the Oval Sedan. Veteran Oval Sedan, I might add, but luckily the grenade misses. Smoke does it. Commando's down to his last life. Come on. He needs support. Mattress fire. Mattress needs fire in mid. But again, it's not just that. The allies need to hold it for minutes. Just to put in perspective, right? Because I have, like, the victory point thing. They would need to hold the victory points for another... What? Uh, if we're looking at this, another five minutes? This isn't a simple call in to victory. This is a long, grueling battle the Allies still need. Snipers coming on in. Can they put down the veteran unit? They do! The veteran! Almost Sadan gets put down by the sniper. The other one died, though, but still, the sniper. May oh, God. <laughs> Germans like, fuck you, fuck you very, very much. And yeah, Storm Tiger pushed it back, but here comes another unit. And I don't think the Germans have. Okay, the Panzer IV. D Gaming, do you have your fireflies? He does. Double Firefly pounds the Panther, rips and tears through its armor. Can the rockets help kill it? They do, and the Panther goes down. Panzer IV is next up on the chopping block. Does have support from AT. But British did loot. They did uh, successfully decap the position. Another Piat squad coming on in. God damn. So much. Oh, wait, hold on. Push from commandos on the right. They'll decap the territory. Remember, if it's two, it'll go by a little quicker. Commando's trying to hide. Panzer IV is here, though. I love it. They light up the Oval Sedan as getting close. Throw a grenade. Successfully. Hold on. They don't give a fuck about this Panzer IV. They're just trying to kill the infantry. And it worked. Oh, hold on. Hopefully Panzer IV doesn't go try to chase it. I say that because the fireflies are still somewhere. Uh, they're over there. So if he gives chase and gets double shot, and he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, were you expecting such an intense match? I certainly was not. I certainly was not expecting all this utter chaos. But both sides refused to give up. The Germans resorting to fucking Pumas. I repeat, they're resorting... To Pumas. They're like, all right, the King Tiger, not working. All right, we have to try something different. We got a lot of Pumas in the storage factories. Bring them out of here. We are literally going to ambush and outrun the Fireflies. That said, Churchill makes its debut. But, 
almost to die, managed to take mid. Remember, the Germans still have a decent amount of reserves, and even though they burned through it, the Allies have been burning through what's left. So overall, population-wise, we're looking at average for the Allies at, like, upper 50s. For the Axis, we're looking at upper 60s. So the Allies still need to keep punching down on the Germans. But, you know, if... If they do the Puma Force, and it utter, if it fails in a major way, well, that would do it. Storm Tiger just trying to keep the infantry at bay. And again, we have a lot of very, pretty good infantry on the right, so I don't suspect that's going to go well. So it's a grind in mid. A battle of attrition. One, in this case, the British, I don't think can afford. But they will try. Fireflies will try to kill the Sturm. Here we go. Sniper, maybe go for the kill shot. Misses. Mattress does. Mattress kills the Obosadon and might kill the AT gun. They decap the point with three points remaining. The British hold on to victory. Or at least the hopes of victory. Royal Engineers trying to fight Obosadon in a desperate battle. Neither side prevails, but the British have more reserves immediately on the front. Oh my... No... Here comes the pain. Na, 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 na. It's all right. Fireflies push on. No, fireflies get pushed on by the Pumas. Churchill can still fire, though. And, yeah, there goes the Puma. Don't worry. Still got a second one. Where's the third one? Oh, it just popped out. Yeah, a little light there, buddy. I think he saw my Puma Ace video, and he's like, I got a plan. Panzer IV pushes on in. Tries to pen the Churchill, but unfortunate mistake, unable to, and gets put down. British managed to take the position. Lovely boy has no armor remaining. Who know you has some armor remaining. They just need to grab the point, and commandos drop on the other. I don't think the Puma rush was a great strategy, to be honest. Obsidon gets torn apart by the Brens. Commando's like, all right, cool LMG, bro. That's mine. That's mine now. That's mine. Hold on. It was a trap. Sturm Tiger puts down the infantry section. Oh, sorry, the commandos as they went in for it. Damn, that was a veteran unit. Who know you? Knew he was going to go for it. Laid an ambush, and it was a great success. Mattress fire, hitting the whole area. Just trying to stop any German forces from coming on in. On the right, we have some uh, forces moving in. But commandos, remember, they can move up. And they can still heal. As long as it's in friendly territory. Which, okay, maybe he needs to grab some stuff to do that, but still. So, what are they, what are they planning? We got Panzer IV... This Panzer IV is not going to survive against the amount of AT. The Firefly, especially a Vet Three Firefly, can absolutely rip and tear. So, we'll have to see how this pans out. But truly, the Brits will not give up. Snipers now just trying to wear down the veteran infantry. More commandos dropping in, trying to go for the kill. Is he truly? Did he just drop in to kill? He dropped in to kill that squad. Like, what is happening? Panzer IV does manage to push back the commandos, which did manage to grab an LMG, by the way. They, they did manage that. Hold on. Grenade and by, via the Churchill managed to push back the Vulcan mid. Left hand side being captured by the Brits. The Germans just need two points. Just two points and they win this game. Hold on! Wait! They're about to get this point. Oh, no, I was going to say, if they could stop this point from being captured, maybe they have something. Shocked that we have not seen more Goliaths. Just just point out there. Just wanted to put that out there. But, uh, still, a hell of a game. This is the type of match I've missed. Oh, my God. Just down to the wire, against the odds, one force managing to overcome another. Just... Again, it, it it wasn't the Germans had what they needed. They just what the what's this Puma trying to do? Not sure. They had what they needed, 
They just did not concentrate it like the British did. So a smaller force overcame another force because the other force just wasn't uh, bringing all their forces up to the table. So what, what you can say is they did a reverse Prussia. The Allies in this case were Prussia and the Axis were the French. There you go. We have white phosphorus to stop any armor and again, can't fire the Sturm Tiger in that shit, so yeah. Oh, wait, pushes through. Five points remaining. Taking the shot. Wouldn't be the final uh, minute of the match if a commando squad didn't burst into fiery bits. Uh, Sturm Tiger, which probably might have died there. 36 kills, not too shabby. And that's game. That is GG. As the Germans were taking the right, they were unable to take mid. Hell of a comeback. Hell of a comeback for the Allies. Again, the Axis could have won that, but they didn't because they relied too much on heavy tanks and in some weird Puma strats that, again, Yag Tiger would have been fine. Or sorry, Yag Panzers would have been fine. An actual tank destroyer used in numbers, supported by infantry, would have done the trick. But alas, that was not the case. And uh, yeah, as you can see, lovely boy, uh, top damage, who know you actually got slightly more kills. Taz is the one who submitted this. Thank you, Taz, for submitting it. It was a hell of a game. You did start throwing away commandos, though in the end, I guess that did help you prevail. Top damage goes to Taz and top kill. So, wonderful game. Good match. Let's double check the MVPs. Uh, let's see. Rakan Warfare, pretty solid. Though, I gotta give a hand. The first King Tiger held up pretty damn well. And, again, uh, who, uh, sorry. What was it? Lovely Boy Stuka, I thought was pretty good. This King Tiger also did pretty good. Oh, it's a Dotton. Not too shabby for Ken Riffers. Again, just providing that needed support. Fireflies coming in clutch, helping tear down all that armor. So wonderful counterattack. And Taz is Churchill surviving so many battles they should have died, but they prevailed and they kept on fighting to the bitter end. That dive killing the Stukas in the half track sealed the deal for the Allies almost. So hell of a push. But great armor battle, great comeback story. Literally a battle that the Allies. Uh, stated, we will not surrender, and they did not. <laughs> the commandos gave needed sacrifices. I would say so. All right, but that is a hell of a match. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this with GrayShot17. I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is GrayShot17. And before y'all go, let me give a special shout-out to Patreon supporters. Joey G240, Malam, Big Cooch, Afaria, Ace, Pyroshark, Tony B 95 Epic Pleb, Thank you all for your incredible support and in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.